I started developing this product a year ago with the intent of creating a self-sustaining power supply. One that doesn't require you to plug it in or charge it with any other device, not wind, solar, hydro. I put everything in this standard 19 inch rack mount box because I look at this as a building block. Much like the computer servers that have this form factor uh, in data processing centers, as a power producing building block, you simply add more units in the rack until you achieve your goal. Now I'm going to show you really quickly just a, a couple of things here and then I'm going to open the, the top and explain everything to you and show you how it works. But uh, right here you can see I've added a couple of USB ports to, to this device. Now again I want to be right up front with you and, and let you know that this is a prototype. These are not available for sale, at least not yet. So anyway, I put these two USBs, you just hit this little switch here and the LEDs light up, let you know that it's powered up. The red one here indicates that the, uh, the two USB ports are live and then you got phone or tablet or, or whatever uh, you want to use these for. Just plug it in and charge it up or if you got one of these cheap little USB testers you can you can plug other devices into it and see what kind of power it's demanding. It tells you the volts, tells you the amps and just uh, plug anything in. This is just a little light. Anyway, that that's just a little gimme and uh, doesn't really need that because the most important thing, let me just move this, is in the back side. Now I haven't screwed the lid down so that's why everything looks a little bit loose here. But uh, there's a couple of binding posts here. I've got it fused for 20 amps though the internal can go, can deliver much more than that. But I just want to keep it safe. You just unscrew these and and put a, a standard cable, uh, battery type cable, like uh, this one here, and just attach that to it, and then attach these from one to the next in parallel series, or whatever kind of output that you're looking for. So that's that. Let's open it up. Okay, I will give you just a quick overview on the simplest device there could be. This thing really only consists of two parts. These are uh, graphite polymer cells. They are in th this black heat shrink, this big industrial heat shrink. There's two blocks of these. Each, each block, and they set on top of each other, uh, each block is, uh, has 12 cells in it and they're all connected in parallel. And then the block underneath, uh, same thing in parallel, and then those two blocks are connected in series. So it gives you a little higher voltage, but plenty of current. And this is a, a 2.85 um, Maxwell Super Cap or Ultra Cap. This is this is a close up on it. These monsters are are pretty powerful. The spec sheet on this says that of course it's for, it'll last for a million cycles. Of course, there isn't a lithium battery on the planet that can do more than several thousand and uh, probably outlive me and most of the people watching this video but 3400 farads in just this one three of these things in parallel you'd have over 10,000 farads it's pretty amazing the reason that the posts are so big is because they can also output 2,000 amps every time you cycle this thing for a million cycles <laughs> that's unbelievable that's the spec sheet from Maxwell it says that if you short circuit this thing it'll produce up to 10,000 amps so uh, you know, I'm not trying to do product placement. I'm just uh, impressed with the product. It's uh, a good company, good products, and so they make sense to me, and so I use them. It says here that it's uh, 3.84 watt hours. It's actually closer to four, and I usually like to hold these this size up to about 2.9, maybe even 2.95. Three volts is the maximum. Uh, so uh, yeah, you do what you want. So this is an electro, a long-term electrochemical device. Okay and its entire function and job in life is just to keep that cap charged. Now naturally it's not going to keep up with as fast as you could drain this thing. You could drain it in a few seconds if you if you <laughs> so desired. Of course you'd have to change the fuse. I've only got a fuse for 20 amps. So uh, anyway, but I did that for safety's sake too. You can understand why now. But um, anyway that's that's their whole job is just to keep that thing charged. And so, so this is the source of energy, and this is the delivery point. That's it. Just A and B. Done. These over here are just extra parts. The, the two USB ports and some wires, the binding posts that you see back here. 
I'll turn it to the side, I'll turn it to this end view so you can see the cells, and I'll go into greater detail on these cells, how they're made. Here's an end view of the cells. I know this kind of looks like a mess in here, but it's nothing but uh, reflection from the shiny black heat shrink, so ignore that. But anyway, I don't know if you can see it very well because it's, it's pretty dark in there, but uh, but there's 12 cells. In fact, I can I can show you right here. You can see where they separate, okay? These 12 cells on top are in parallel, again, and the 12 cells on the bottom are also in parallel, and then they're connected in series right here, and then here's the output that goes up to the cap. The last part of this video that some of you have been waiting for begs the question, what are these cells made of? And now I'm going to explain to you what they're made of. I told you that the, the cells were made a year ago and they've been sitting on the shelf until I could get back to this project. Uh, I've had a really good year with the Q-Beta program and thanks to many here in the US and many abroad that have uh, helped support that program and that helps us uh, accelerate and go into these other um, parts as well as advance the systems that we have developed. But um, the, so a year ago before I made these cells I made these prototypes and here's one of the prototypes and uh, let's see if you can see this. Maybe I can zoom out a little bit and bring it closer and let it focus. Okay, so this is a graphite polymer cell. And this is the graphite polymer plate on this side. The active area is one inch by two inches. And the, the thickness of this in millimeters, there you go, you can see that. The thickness is uh, 0.4 millimeters, so it's very, very thin. Okay, on this side, this is the opposite side, and this is the graphite alloy, as you can see. And this is, uh, this is just the contact terminal for the uh, graphite polymer side here. It's, it's super flexible. I mean, this thing can be formed to just about, I mean, it's very, very flexible. I don't want to bend this one up because I, I think flat is a, uh, a more sensible storage than, uh, than rolled. But, but um, when I first made this, Oh, I'm sorry. I did. I didn't mention the electrolyte. The electrolyte in between the part that is so important is a polymer electrolyte. It's a solid polymer electrolyte. Now you can see that it's got to be super, super thin to work, and and it does. So it's um, it's both an electrolyte. I shouldn't say more than I should say more than both. It's an electrolyte. It's an insulator. Um, it allows ion transfer. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's my own pr proprietary mix, but it has a curing time. It cures out. And when I first made uh, the very first cell, which this is the one, this is the actual very first graphite polymer cell that I made, it's wrapped up in tape, uh, clear tape, just to hold these contacts in place on the uh, graphite polymer side and, and the, um, uh, the graphite alloy side. So, and you can see where I'm marked for negative and positive, but when I first made this thing, it, it pretty much read zero volts at zero amps. I mean, it was less than microamps. So I immediately chucked the thing in the trash bin and said, okay, that, that was a failed experiment. I'll try again later. But uh, I, I slept on it that night, came out the next day, grabbed it out of the trash, and thought, hey, wait a minute. You know what? Sometimes these have to be uh, compressed or deformed to actually, you know, when it's a solid, to actually uh, get it into uh, a working condition. So what I did is I took a broom handle, it's really crude, and you can see it's, it's like this little perfect circle. I just wrapped it around a broom handle and suddenly the thing just came alive. And then it was like one and a half volts, still is, uh, one and a half volts, but low current, probably, uh, I think this one's between 50 and 100 microamps, so not a lot of current but uh, decent voltage. But anyway, so, so what was a failed experiment turned out to be very interesting. Okay, so then I made this particular version, kept it in the flat state. Now this one's a little bit larger than this other one. Uh, in other words, this one's two inches long, and I think this one was only about uh, one and a half inches long uh, before it was curled. So, so I made this one, and this one went through compression while it was in the curing stage. And so right now, this uh, typically reads uh, 1.8 volts, but the interesting thing about it is that, oh, at 1.8 volts at about uh, between 100 and 200 microamps, so still not a whole lot of current, but you can see because it's 0.4 millimeters.
But the interesting thing about this one is that you can also charge this. Now the cells inside here are made up of 80% of the exact same thing as, as this cell. Uh, the other 20% is the fact that these are a heavier gauge material because if you want it to last for two or three decades, it's got to be a heavy enough weight so that you have plenty of material that can be chewed up over time since it is an electrochemical device, but it's a very, very long-term device. So that's, that's one of the reasons, and the other is it has a slightly different electrolyte than, than this solid that's required for this very thin. But this, uh, I hear, I see a lot of things. Oh, people, are, oh, I got a new battery technology. Yeah, it's a graphite polymer. Well, this was a year ago. No big deal. Here it is. It works. Um, I can show you also here with this trusty old voltmeter or multimeter and show you that it does read. Whoops. Let's get this where it can be seen. Get my hands where they can work. Okay, so there we are, 1.78. Uh, it, it varies, it goes up to between 1.76 and 1.85. Depends on uh, the warmth in the room, uh, uh, mostly that because graphite products are very thermally uh, reactive, so it's, it's interesting. But it will work when it's cold, but it works better when it's a little bit warm, so that's just that. But I have this little I have this little transformer made by LG and it is it's a USB little USB transformer let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that focus you're gonna be you're gonna be in trouble come on okay so it's 5.1 volts at uh, 700 milliamps as you can see and they call it a travel adapter that's fine so I just put these little clips on the end so that I could connect it and let me plug this in. What I do is it's convenient. I've got power supplies but this is convenient. I just keep it by my side and I like to test out some of these little cells just to see if they can or can't be charged. In most cases they can't be because it's an electrochemical device even though it is something that will last a long long time. I still want to know you know is have I nailed the electrolyte? Is this a chargeable apparatus or not? So We'll just put this on. This is, oops, okay. That's the, oh, I need to protect, the, oh, let's just do it like this. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's just do it. I'm just gonna touch it for um, three seconds. How about that? 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Now you saw that it was one point seven eight volts and in just three seconds it is 2.25 now if you keep that on there the little charger on there for say 30 seconds or a minute it'll hold that 2.2 or 2.0 for hours so this little thing can be charged up doesn't need to be but it can be that opens up a whole new door. So that's really interesting. And that's what these cells are too. So to, uh, to recap real quickly, and I don't want this video, oops, sorry. I don't want this video to be made too long. Actually, I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is I'll have two separate boxes. Since this is just a prototype and I just want to test the charge discharge cycles and things like that with this prototype. But I'm thinking, two boxes. This is a 1U size and, and I could either use a 2U or I could use two 1Us and one of the 1U size could be like this one and it could have uh, seven of these inside of it. It'll fit seven. And that would be just under uh, let's see, 24,000 farads. That's, that's a lot of storage, that's a lot of power if they're all connected in uh, parallel. And then the second 1U rack box would be more cells and I probably would use something closer to well a little bit thicker than this 0.4 millimeter cell but I could have seven stacks of cells that would each individually connect uh, through a, a wiring harness and to the seven individual uh, ultra cap or super caps like this 
in the other rack mount box. So it'd be a, a dual combination or it'd be one box. But that one box would be kind of heavy. So I thought maybe two separate boxes would be better. And then you could build on that so it makes your building blocks even greater. You could uh, add more capacitors or or more cells or, or, or whatever, you know, to, to get up to the point where you want to be. So that's kind of where I'm going and that's what this video is about and that's uh, what these are made of and now you know. Thank you.